At celebrating the birthday of Malawi's fourth president, Her Excellency Dr. Joyce Banda, we shared with you some of the highlights of the life of the former president. We are compelled by the overwhelming response to come up with this second edition as dictated by public demand, her life after her presidency. I had to leave um, State House and I went home. Uh, to my village where we have our retirement home in Katabe. I left Malawi uh, on the 29th of, of June to go on my assignments overseas. Just after leaving office in May, the pressure was enormous for the Joyce Banda Foundation to expand. A month after relinquishing power, Dr. Joyce Banda launched the Joyce Banda Foundation International Africa Initiative in South Africa with the focus on women empowerment, promotion of girl-child education, social services aimed at liberating the poor grew bigger through the expansion of JBFI. In July 2014, Dr. Banda traveled to the Starkey Hearing Foundation. She presented her speech at the Starkey Hearing Foundation's Founders Day in Minnesota, USA. Apart from Dr. Banda, Desmond Tutu, Forrest Whitaker, and Hillary Clinton were also some of the speakers at the annual event. Dr. Banda came back to Malawi and continued her grassroots engagements. She launched a new initiative in cassava production in Katabe, Mzuzu, and Mzimba. She also distributed blankets to widows. On the 15th of September, Dr. Banda left the country for United Nations General Assembly. While there, she held several side meetings. On the sidelines, Dr. Banda spoke at a global call to action conference on women and girls' financial health. She was a keynote speaker at a global network of first ladies. She also met the former president of the USA, George Bush Jr. in New York on the sidelines of the 69th session of the UN General Assembly. Every year, the BBC recognizes women for outstanding achievements in different aspects. BBC identifies 100 most influential women and invites them to the BBC headquarters. Out of the 100, a few are selected to speak on topical issues. In October 2014, Dr. Banda was among the first group to feature on a BBC 100 Women Conference in London. She was identified as one of the speakers. Dr. Banda spoke on the challenges faced by women. Women have made important strides in public life across the world. They increasingly serve as heads of state, parliamentarians, ambassadors, Supreme Court judges, and senior administrative officers. And, Mala and Africa has done very well, because I know some parts of the world that are developed that are still struggling to get one woman into state house. As we know, women constitute the majority of our populations in the world, and when we talk about issues of representation, we are actually talking mostly about women. These issues range from uneven access to decision-making posts across the public sector to the persistent pay gap and women's concentration in low-paid occupational groups. Distinguished ladies and gentlemen, allow me to cite some of the challenges that women face on their journey to public life. Lack of access to formal education, lack of economic empowerment, patriarchal society, lack of role models and mentoring, failure to exercise their rights. These challenges negatively affect the development of women and their ability to rise to public offices. We must then ask, why do we still face these challenges despite many in-country and global efforts to close gender gaps and empower women? Is it not surprising 
that among the Millennium Development Goals that we will not achieve by 2015 relate to women. I'm talking about Millennium Development Goal 3, promoting gender equality and the empowerment of women, and five, improving maternal health. I'm to I am of the view that women do not get into leadership positions by chance. Therefore, deliberate policies and conducive environments need to be created to allow women to participate in public life. She also said women are able to compete in politics comfortably and are able to help other women too. In the same month of October, Dr. Banda was invited as a visiting professor at the prestigious London School of Economics in the Faculty of Political Science. She focused her work on the above parapet visitor professor in practice. She discussed with the faculty on what builds a woman leader in her childhood, tracing the roots of a woman leader from childhood. To sum it up, she gave a lecture on 15 October. The lecture was open to the public. Distinguished ladies and gentlemen, it's a great pleasure for me to be here. Let me thank the Institute for Public Affairs of the London School of Economics and uh, Political Science for offering me above parapet visitor professor in practice at this distinguished academic institution. As we analyze the status of women in the world today and their journeys into public life, it is important to reflect on what Libe Sultan of Yahoo Incorporation had to say, and I quote, So much of what it takes to be a leader has been historically defined by men. And while I was determined to be a leader, the last thing in the world I was going to do was to try to be like a man so that I could be taken seriously. I had to continue to be myself and create a leadership style that worked for me. I am just not capable of being anyone other than who I am. End of quote. I was being interviewed one time by SABC, Movers and Shakers of Africa. And they said, you've worked so hard, you want to get to the top and be as strong as a man. I said, no, I've worked so hard so I can get to the top and be a powerful woman. <laughs> Indeed, as we discuss the journeys women have taken into public life, issues of poverty, underdevelopment, underrepresentation, equality, equity, and inclusivity immediately come to mind. As we know, women constitute the majority of our populations in the world. And when we talk about these issues, we are actually talking mostly about women who are in majority. I have said everywhere that yes, indeed, we are in majority. We are over 52%. But I think what will happen tonight is that I will have persuaded the men enough to join us and to recognize the fact that not only are we 52%, but the last time I checked, we brought into this world the other half. <laughs> I wish to note that despite there being progress for women moving into decision-making positions as witnessed by the rise of women at all levels of society, including becoming heads of state and government, women still face various challenges in their journey to public life. On December 27, 2014, CNN named Dr. Joyce Banda the most inspiring woman in politics worldwide. CNN recognized women who remarkably performed in all areas. We continue celebrating the 70th birthday of Her Excellency Dr. Joyce Banda, the fourth president of the Republic of Malawi. We shared with you 2014. We will also share with you the 2015 episode as we continue celebrating the life 
of the former president at 70.